in the Competent Communication Manual, The Icebreaker, where Dave will tell us all about him in his speech, My Wonderful Life. Dave. Okay, I find it fortuitous that I'm giving this at this time of year because I have often identified very closely with the movie It's a Wonderful Life that we talked about last week and the character of the who struggled. He worked at a family business and wanted to get out but never was quite able to do so. And I've had that experience a couple times. I was raised, my uh, early childhood was, I lived on the north side of the Crandall Park area. If you're familiar with that, I'm, uh, over on the north side. It's a largely Catholic, largely Irish community, so there were scores and scores of kids. So we were never bored. In the summer, we played release, flashlight tag. In the winter, we went up to Crandall Park and we sled ride it and uh, ice skated. Then we moved over to Canfield Township. I was about 10 years old, and it was completely different. There was nobody around. So being one of seven, we were able to entertain ourselves. We were out in the woods, we hiked, we tramped around. We ended up swimming. My dad put in a swimming pool, so we swam a lot in the summer. My dad was a butcher. He was actually over in a meat shop in Youngstown. He was the third generation in the family business. So when we started working there, all very small, we were the fourth generation. I was probably eight when I began working there. We did things like we swept the floors and burned trash, carry out packages. It was, it was a very old, neat place, and it's hard to appreciate now. We had the, old, the rails where you have sides of beef and cattle that would come in, and the butchers would cut it right off of there. The floors, you put sawdust all over the floor because it picked up the blood and the grease. There were no computers. There were no digital scales. There weren't even calculators. My dad was this math whiz. He could calculate fractions times decimals and add up ten figures and he did it instantaneously. He was, he was a bright, bright guy. However, things got in the way, he started having personal problems, divorce, and made some decisions that were questionable. The biggest one was moving our business from Youngstown out to Canfield Township in the old ports slaughterhouse and meat packing plant out there. Our trade was a lot of walk-in and they did not follow us out to Canfield. So consequently, in a very short time, the business closed. If you can appreciate irony at all, Ford's slaughterhouse, which became log packing, is now dangerous for animals. House. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad, he, he struggled for a while. He, it really, I don't think he ever really recovered, but he ended up working for my mother and her second husband, who also owned a meatpacking place, coincidentally. So we moved from one family business to another, and that's really where I had a 30-year career. I began as a route driver, and through, the, through driving, I met my wife at one of the stops. She worked <laughs> at the sandwich factory in Hubbard, okay. and we dated for four years, and we've been married for 28. And coincidentally enough, my brother Mike met his wife the exact same way. <laughs> he delivered to the Warren Sandwich Factory and met his wife, Claudia. They've been married for 32 years. So I guess the old saying, the way to a man's heart is through his, through his stomach. <laughs> validity to that. Like George Bailey from the movie, I had a love-hate relationship with Shaq Pack. I went off the road and into the office, and it's very hard to separate family from family business, and it's not always easy. There were many, many times all I wanted to do was punch one of my brothers in the throat. <laughs> and then, of course, we're expected to attend Sunday dinner with smiles on when you don't even want to talk to them. So it could be very, very difficult. 
But on the flip side, there was there was good stuff. I was able to I can go to a program for my kids at school. I was able to leave a bit early to coach soccer. I was able to raise my kids like I was. I was able to give them jobs. So my kids started working very young. They would do the same thing. They would clean our office. They would carry out packages. We had a little production area they would work in. Uh, they did billing. They complained a lot. But then they liked the money. And I think later they appreciated the experience that they got. In the end, about 2008, when the recession came, we started having troubles. And of course the troubles grew more serious and more serious. And we, we fought, and we fought valiantly. But in the end, we had to go out of business. So again, my family went through this loss. Because when your, fam when your business closes, a family business, it's actually like a death in the family. And, it, and you go through that pain, you go through that loss, through all those stages. But we all got through it. We moved on. We all got jobs. I got a good job, and I work for the Chamber of Commerce. I, I like what I do. I like the people I work with. And I, I'm always a kind of try to be a forward-looking person. I don't dwell on the past. I look for. I think I've got a great future. When I do look backwards, though, I do know that I did have a wonderful life. Dave, that was a fantastic first speech. Did really, really well. Dave, you know, you made your first speech today. How'd that go for you? Well, I felt pretty comfortable as I was explaining to somebody else here. I think it's, I'm more comfortable speaking within this group than I am in other situations. It's a, a more welcoming, more friendly group. So I, I didn't have the jitters that I thought I would have had. And that's kind of interesting because what we saw with you is a little bit of naturalness, a lot of poise, a lot of honesty. Is that what you wanted to kind of bring to what you did today? I was... Yes. There, there are certain things that I didn't want to get into too deep, but if I'm going to talk about myself, I, I think honesty is the best way to go. Now, what, what made you want to come, become a Toastmaster? I, it's actually a career. Hopefully, it will provide some advancement in my career because the more I go on, the more I will need to speak in public. And I've always been very, not very good at that. I've been apprehensive. I've been the nervous knocks. So I just wanted to improve my performance so that it will help me move in the career way. Great.